Here's Jerry Lee Lewis, Great Balls of Fire. You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. In 1957, a television program called American Bandstand went national on the ABC network. The show's target audience quickly demonstrated its newfound power by turning Bandstand and its host, Dick Clark, into overnight icons. Every kid watched. There was a story about once a police chief was afraid a rumble was going to happen, a street fight, because no kids were around. And they conducted a door-to-door -door search. They found all the kids were watching the Bandstand. I remember feeling this tremendous feeling of confirmation that I belong to a group of people called Teenager, and we have our own music. All of a sudden, you know, I just, I felt that I could, I could express myself, I could be free, I could dance and I could shake around and I could have fun. There was no stopping us, you know? <laughs> The parents didn't have a chance. <laughs> what must a poet look like? Should he have long... Another way that the young were breaking away was through their use of language. The beat movement thrived in the coffee houses of New York's Greenwich Village. As the wipers squeaked in time on the glass, like angry reptiles running from an enemy. The village has a life and language all its own. If you dig it, you're hip. If you don't, man, you're square. Beat next were the forefathers of the 1960s counterculture, challenging the conformity of the 50s by ridiculing mainstream values. My mom wanted a new kitchen. She wanted new appliances. That was her self-identity. And the Beats were saying, why are you identifying with material things? There's more.